My whole life my sister had to be better than me and talk down to me about everything from my appearance, friends, dating life, pets, jobs, and any other life choices I've made. Beginning. I met my fiancé two years ago at work. The first time we planned to hang out was at the lake with a bunch of people. Hours of her screaming summarized to it being unprofessional and whorish for me to go and be there in a bikini. This ended with her intentionally letting my new puppy out the front door to run away. Soon after we started dating and she was nice to him, but started privately questioning me on his finances and insinuating his lifestyle was all debt or fraud. Eventually she started trashing him to my parents and told them I would end up in jail. His income and assets started the gold digger comments. Side note, my fiancé is an entrepreneur and is in logistics. A couple months into dating, my fiancé's business crashed along with hundreds of other trucking companies. I honestly believe my sister couldn't wait to start rubbing having a stable life in our faces. She started telling my parents that he never had anything, that it was all an act to bag me that it's not fair she can't show off her gifts when we come around, that it's impossible for him to have had what he had and lose it, that if he was as knowledgeable as he says he is, this couldn't have happened. To add to the blow, his mother was diagnosed with cancer in the midst of his business crash. I ignored the digs and tried to be as supportive as possible for him. She is cancer-free now. Fast forward, we got engaged, celebrated with the family, and everyone was super happy for us. Then the questions comments started rolling in. What are the specs of your diamond? Where did he buy it? Do you have it insured? How much was your insurance? Things are moving really fast. Are you sure about this? Is he as supportive of you as you are of him? Because I don't see it and I'm worried about you. Then his grandmother had a fall and her health rapidly declined. She passed away within a month of everything. He was heartbroken. Time goes on and we started planning the wedding adding about 30 people to our list for her. My sister offered to pay for my dress before any of the shopping began. I cried with joy and thanked her. She said my budget was $3,000. I then tried to plan dates to go see dresses, but she was always busy. Finally, I said that if she wants to be a part of this, she has to be available. We go to my first dress appointment, where I invited too many people for her liking. She wanted it to be just us and our mother. I stood up for my decision and said it was my wedding. She was the only one that came with me in the fitting room, kept calling me a big girl, and told me not to worry that we'd find something that would fit me. I'm a size 4 to 6 in jeans for reference. I came out to show everyone the dresses and the comment was made that I have too much of a pouch and my shoulders were too big for the styles of dresses I wanted. I cried the whole way home. Eventually, I found a dress at another place with just my sister and my mother. The dress was $8,000, so they told me to keep looking, even though I said I'd pay anything over the budget, she said. Finally, I schedule my engagement shoot for my Save the Dates. I FaceTimed her with excitement, and she told me we looked like white trash and that she had to go. She didn't ask how it went after, but called my dad the next day to trash us. Little did she know he had her on speakerphone and I was there. On the call, she said, Did you see what she had him wearing? She couldn't find clothes that fit him? My dad let her know she was on speaker and that I heard everything. She hung up and I never said anything to her. Later, she texts saying that she didn't mean anything bad but was mad at me for being selfish, focusing on myself, and not dressing my fiancé better. I didn't respond. He's a little chubby and always has been. He felt great in the outfit we picked and I thought he looked amazing. A week goes by and I get into a tiff with my best friend because it came out that she's been letting my sister trash my fiancé for months and not stopping it or telling me. I still say nothing. Weeks have gone by and Thanksgiving comes. I show up to my parents and say hello to everyone, including my sister. She kept trying to make every comment into an argument, stormed out, and was brought back in. Her husband and our father both tried to tell her to behave and mind her business. She wanted to know where we got the money for my dress, made a jab at my fiancé sperm count, also refused to get in a family picture with us. The night ended early with her throwing her plate, screaming like a banshee and storming out. I still have not said a word to her. I've been told to reach out and apologize multiple times, or at least reach out so she has an opportunity to talk things through. My parents keep telling me that she loves me and is trying to protect me. I haven't reached out. I won't. 
I do not want my future to be surrounded by her delusions and condemnations. I need her to call me, take ownership, and show changed behavior. This is supposed to be the happiest time of my life, not a witch hunt. Now here's where I become the A.H. I received a call from my father today that she had some bad test results and probably needs surgery. He asked if I was going to call her. I told him that I love her very much, but I cannot be there to support her while she has continuously tried to tear me apart. If she had extended an olive branch, I would have been more than glad to talk to her. What's going on with her is scary, but not fatal. She's known about it for some time, and she can't bank on this for me to come running. If she calls me to confide in me and apologizes, I'll be there for her. He was clearly upset with me, but I can't undo everything she did prior to her needing me. Edit for clarification. I have definitely thrown hands with my sister on the past in attempts at defending myself when she pushes me to my seeing red point. I have made a conscious effort not to let her push me to that point by going silent on her since my previous requests to end conversations have never been respected. I have gone no contact, no contact, after she made the comments about our engagement shoot. Other than saying hi at my parents, I have blocked her on everything. I did tell my parents that for the sake of my future family, I cannot continue to get stabbed just to make them happy, and that I will not tolerate any disrespect towards my future husband. I paid for my dress and I think that, along with not knowing that I bought it, were a few of the reasons she went apesh tea on Thanksgiving. I have also told my parents she is not invited to my wedding because I cannot trust her to hold her tongue. I exaggerated the invite number for her, it's 16 unless I'm forgetting people. I have told them my whole life they enabled her and treated me like the black sheep. I lived in their house and couldn't separate from it. My sister is my best friend's boss, so they interact daily. My friend has seen this pattern of abuse and that's why I was upset she enabled it, especially during my engagement. Her and I have made up but set the boundary that she will change the subject with my sister and not go into details of my life with her. Puppy was saved 30 minutes after escaping. I did suggest an intervention on Thanksgiving, saying that she needs professional help. My family told me I needed therapy. Well, obviously. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. Not the idiot, but ma'am. Cut your sister off. You have been her doormat for far too long, and honestly, the more I read, the madder I got at both of you. You need to defend yourself and your fiancé. The fact that you think turning the other cheek does anything more than let her act more unhinged and ruin things for you, which you allow her to do, let's be honest. If she's sick, that's for her husband to deal with, not you. Comment 2. Your sister is a raging individual. If you don't want to say it to her face, I will. Just hold your phone up to her face so she can see my comment. Hello, Ops sister. Keep your selfish comments to yourself. You are miserable, and nobody appreciates your company. Sincerely, people trying to live their lives without being judged by narcissistic individuals. Now, for the update, a lot has happened since the last time I talked about my sister and the ongoing issues we've been having. Things have taken a turn, and I'm still trying to process everything that's unfolded. After the Thanksgiving debacle, I thought things couldn't get worse, but I was wrong. My sister's health scare seemed to be the talk of the family, but I stood my ground and didn't reach out. I was firm on needing an apology before I could offer any support. My parents were disappointed, but they seemed to understand my stance, even if they didn't agree with it. In the days that followed, my fiancé and I focused on our wedding plans. We were determined to create a day that was about us and our love, without any drama. We booked our venue, chose our menu, and even started dance lessons for our first dance. It was a welcome distraction from the family tension. Then, out of the blue, my sister called me. I was shocked, to say the least. She was crying and apologizing for everything she had done. She said she realized how much she had hurt me and that she wanted to make amends. She even offered to help with the wedding in any way she could. I was hesitant but decided to give her a chance. We agreed to meet for coffee to talk things through. The coffee meetup was awkward at first, but as we talked, it felt like we were making progress. She seemed genuinely remorseful, and I started to believe that maybe we could move past our issues. 
We even hugged before we parted ways, something we hadn't done in years. Feeling hopeful, I shared the news with my fiancé and parents. They were cautiously optimistic, and we all agreed that if my sister could maintain this new attitude, she could be a part of the wedding. But then, two days later, I received a call from my best friend, the same one who had previously let my sister trash my fiancé. She was frantic, saying that she needed to see me immediately. Confused and concerned, I agreed to meet her at her place. When I arrived, she was pacing in her living room, looking like she was on the verge of a nervous breakdown. She blurted out that she had something to tell me, something about my sister. My heart sank, fearing the worst about her health. But it wasn't about her health. My best friend confessed that my sister had orchestrated the entire apology as a ploy. She had overheard my sister bragging to a co-worker about how she was going to play the sick card to get back into my good graces and then ruin my wedding from the inside. My best friend had recorded the conversation on her phone and played it for me. I was stunned. The apology, the tears, the hug. It was all an act. My sister hadn't changed at all. She was still the same manipulative person she had always been, and now she was plotting to destroy the most important day of my life. I felt like I had been punched in the gut. All the progress I thought we had made was a lie. I thanked my best friend for telling me the truth, even though it was painful to hear. I knew what I had to do. I called my sister and confronted her about the recording. She tried to deny it at first, but when I told her I had heard everything, she fell silent. Then, in a cold, emotionless voice, she told me she did what she had to do to protect me from making a mistake by marrying my fiancé. She said she would always be there to save me, whether I wanted her to or not. I hung up the phone, feeling a mix of anger and sadness. I informed my parents about what had happened, and this time, they were fully on my side. They were appalled by my sister's actions and agreed that she should not be a part of the wedding or our lives until she got the help she clearly needed. The wedding is still on, and my fiancé and I are moving forward with our plans. We're hurt and disappointed, but we're also stronger because of this. We know who we can trust, and we're not going to let anyone, not even family, ruin our happiness. As for my sister, I don't know what the future holds for our relationship. Right now, I can't imagine ever forgiving her for what she's done. But life is unpredictable, and who knows what might happen down the line. For now, though, I'm focusing on the positive and the love I have for my fiancé. That's all that really matters. Now, for the comments. Comment 1. Oh, honey, your sister's got more red flags than a bullfighter's convention. It's like she's auditioning for the role of Villain of the Year. Stick to your guns and maybe send her a cactus for Christmas as a symbol of your current relationship status. Prickly and not great for hugs. Comment 2. Been there. My brother was a nightmare when I got engaged. He'd find any excuse to rain on my parade. It's like he thought he was the Simon Cowell of my life. I gave him a choice. Shape up or ship out. He missed my wedding, but my sanity thanked me. Now, for the next story. This sounds bad, but I think I'm right. This past weekend, I, female, 17 years old, went to see a ballet in a fancy hall, which is generally for people who enjoy that stuff. I go every year with my family. The theater goes over rules and stuff like no phones or video recording, and they also mention the exit doors if you need to leave during the performance. Here's the situation. I end up seated on the edge of my family, so I'm sitting next to my sister on the right, but on the left is a stranger. She looks to be maybe in her early 30s or late 20s. She came rushing in right as the lights were dimming with her husband and two kids. One looked to be around eight years old, female, and the other probably three or four years old, male. The eight-year-old was fine. She seemed happy to be there and was even wearing a crown and everything. No hate, just a cute little tidbit. Anyway, the mom has a huge purse that is stuffed to the brim. I couldn't tell when she sat down, but as soon as the opening act came up, she started pulling out kids' toys and coloring pages. They weren't flashy or noisy, but the three- or four-year-old boy didn't seem interested and just kept quietly talking away. The mom kept trying to shush him. I wasn't upset at this point because I know how kids can be. However, towards intermission, the kid is getting restless and he starts fussing. I'm not mad about it because kids are kids. 
Others are giving her looks, but she's desperately trying to distract him. The dad is trying to help as well, but it didn't look like it was making much of a difference. During intermission, I assumed the lady would have been able to calm her kid a bit, but when intermission ended and the second act started, she comes in late with her son still fussing, but even louder. About 20 minutes later, he starts full-on wailing, and she just keeps going, shh, shh, while holding him. At this point, I'm getting sort of upset. There are TVs in the hallway, so you're only missing time by moving from your seat. She can still watch the ballet in the hallway while calming her kid. He might have been overwhelmed, but I don't know. Anyway, I kind of lean over and ask, I'm sorry, but he's being kind of fussy. Did you know there are TVs in the hallway? Not outright asking her to leave, but kind of trying to nudge her out. The boy is in a full meltdown now, kicking other seats and jumping up and down. She told me I wouldn't understand because I'm a teenager, but kids are harder to take care of than a phone. Like what? She continues to sit while trying to entertain him, but then he starts saying, potty, 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 and she leaves. When they come back, he's chill for the rest of the time. My parents agreed with me and how disruptive it was, but told me I didn't have a right to tell or ask her that because I'm a teenager and I'm not supposed to talk to adults like that. They didn't have to sit next to a wailing kid. My point is, why spend money on something that clearly isn't kid-friendly? Her eight-year-old kid was excited to be there, which is fine, and the kid was well-behaved. But a three, four-year-old isn't going to understand or want to sit still for over an hour and a half to watch a ballet with no words. Am I the idiot? Edit to add, this was the Nutcracker in Seattle at McCaw Hall. There were ushers, but the whole process of getting tickets and food purchases seemed crazily slow. I get the feeling they may have been understaffed because when I got to my seat, I only saw two ushers in total. I feel that getting up and talking to an usher would have been even more disruptive as I was in the middle-ish of the row and would have required me to squeeze past others to get to an usher and squeeze past them again to get back to my seat. ETA Part 2 Guys, it's a popular performance hall in Seattle. I appreciate the comments saying I should have just moved, but there physically was not another place for me or the other members of my family to move to. ETA Part 3 Since some are confused, I wasn't telling her to go watch a random TV show in the hall. It's a monitor of the live performance inside the theater. She would be watching in real time what's going on musically and on stage. Also, this doesn't get aired on regular TV, so people saying she paid to be in the auditorium specifically, instead of sitting at home watching the performance, it's impossible for the lady to do that, as it's not like Hamilton. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. You reminded me of the glorious occasion upon which my brave friend stood up in the middle of a movie, turned to face the back of the audience, and in a clear, firm voice called out, Take! the baby, out of, the theater. Not the idiot, of course. Comment two, not the idiot. I would never consider bringing a four-year-old to a performance like that. Her son was taken away from your enjoyment and you had every right to say something. Now, for the update, thanks for all the comments on my last post. They really helped me see things from different perspectives. So, it's been a month since the ballet incident. A few days after the performance, I was scrolling through my social media and saw a post from the ballet company. They were talking about a special event for families with young children, and guess whose picture was featured? The lady with the two kids from the ballet. Turns out she's actually the sister of one of the lead dancers and was in town visiting. The ballet company had invited her to bring her kids to the performance as a special treat. Seeing that post made me feel a bit guilty for how I judged her at the time. I mean, it's not every day you get to watch your family member perform in a professional ballet. I decided to let it go and just focus on my own stuff. Fast forward to last week. I was at the mall with my friends, and we decided to grab some food at the food court. While we were eating, I noticed a family sitting at the table next to us. It was her, the lady from the ballet, with her kids and husband. I tried to keep to myself, but the three-year-old boy saw me and pointed, saying, Ballet! His mom looked over, and our eyes met. I was ready for an awkward encounter, but she surprised me. She came over to our table and apologized for her son's behavior at the ballet.
she explained that it was her brother's big night, and she really wanted her kids to see their uncle perform. She admitted it wasn't the best idea to bring her youngest, but she didn't have a babysitter. She also mentioned that she saw my post on the ballet company's social media page and felt terrible about how things went down. I was shocked. I didn't even think about the possibility of her seeing my post. I apologized too, for not being more understanding at the time. We actually had a nice chat, and she invited me to come to a ballet class for beginners that she taught. I was hesitant at first, but my friends encouraged me to give it a try. So I went to the class, and it was actually a lot of fun. I learned some basic moves and got to know the lady, whose name is Elise, a bit better. She's really nice and a great teacher. Her daughter, the one with the crown, was there too, and she's just as sweet in person. Now, here's where things get really crazy. At the end of the class, Elise pulled me aside and said she had something to tell me. She explained that her brother, the lead dancer, had seen my post too. He felt bad that his performance had been disrupted and wanted to make it up to me. Elisa handed me an envelope and inside were tickets to their next performance, with a note from her brother inviting me and my family to be his special guests. I was floored. I never expected any of this to happen from a simple ballet outing. I told my parents, and they were just as surprised. We're all going to the performance next weekend, and I'm actually excited to see the ballet again, this time with a new appreciation for the dancers and their families. But wait, it gets even more unbelievable. Yesterday, I got a message from the ballet company's social media team. They had seen the exchange between Elise and me and wanted to feature our story as a positive example of how social media can bring people together. They're planning to do a short video interview with us at the performance. I'm still processing all of this. What started as a frustrating experience at the ballet has turned into an opportunity to make a new friend, learn something new, and even get a little bit of unexpected fame. It's funny how life works out sometimes. I guess you never know what can happen when you keep an open mind and try to see the best in people. Now for the comments. Comment 1. Oh man, I've been in your shoes. I once asked a mom to quiet her kid at a movie and got the stink eye for an hour. I get the frustration, but sometimes folks don't have a choice but to bring their littles along. It's a tough spot for everyone. Comment 2. Hey, you live and you learn, right? It's cool that you're reflecting on the situation instead of just stewing about it. Taking the high road and joining that ballet class was a classy move. Sounds like you turned an awkward encounter into a positive experience. Keep that open mind. It'll take you far. If you liked this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.